I want to start with the wide receivers, and I, I, just a caveat here. I am gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna mispronounce a name here or get a college wrong at some point you're here. Supposed so, to do so pay, uh, in the comments below. But I'm glad you're starting with the that. receivers because to me this was, this is the cream of the crop of the combine. I mean, this to me was one of the themes of the combine was just like sitting there on Thursday night going. Holy shit, he looks good. Yeah. Holy crap, he looks good. Yeah. Holy crap, he's fast. I mean, it was one freak after another, uh, and that's why you're hearing that, you know, there's truly sounds like there could be six, seven wide receivers taken in the first round, and so, I get it. So let's go through it. So here's some of the names. you got the Justin Jefferson from LSU who had yeah. the eighth fastest 40. Mm -hmm. Solid in his jumps Loved there. it. Loved good on-field workouts. Right. He, he, to me, this was the guy where you watched you watched TV this year in LSU. Mm -hmm. You saw everything you wanted to on the field. You went, oh, good size, can run after the catch. Man, looks sil silky smooth running the routes. Benefit of a good quarterback. Benefit of a good quarterback, certainly. Okay, great. You know, but I think all the the on the field drills confirmed, oh, Justin Jefferson's a complete wide receiver. And then we got to see, oh, okay, he does run low to mid 4-4. Four, four. Sure. Okay, so he's legit explosive too. And that answers that. And Justin Jefferson will definitely be a first-round wide receiver. So, yes, he was definitely a guy that jumped out to me. C.D. Lamb from Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, C.D. Lamb, I mean, I, I like C.D. Lamb. I'm not, I'm not going to say, like, I'm in love with C.D. Lamb. So he's not physically imposing, he, but he, fast yes. enough is what one of the scouting reports I saw. Fast enough. The 40 was my big question about him. And, you know, explosion is not his game that way anyways. You know, and a 34-and-a-half-inch vertical jump, that tells you, too. I mean, that's not much higher than me, which ain't that impressive. So, you know, that tells you he's not that kind of guy. Now, the other weird thing I'll say about CeeDee Lamb, and this dude can play, so don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. has weird hips, has a weird gait to me. That's something I watch at the receiver position. It's very important. Anybody that really evaluates wide receivers, Annie, I'm going to stand up for two seconds, all right, is the ability to be fluid and right. You can stay down for this oh, time. Dang you it. To get up. I we were but both. the ability to be able to be loose and unhinged here because it gives you the ability to be like, oh, my hips are this way, and boom, I can come out of a break like that. There's some receivers where they're very tight through here. They can't do that stuff. They literally have to go... Right? And they have yeah. to make that type of move. And that becomes an advantage for the DB at the next level because he starts to read that and go, ooh, he's making that move. I can read his hips. You know, they kind of like are stuck together with the rest of his body. So that is just something that jumps out to me from watching. But size, jump ball ability is going to be big for him. Yeah. And then the other thing is he is really crafty in the open field with the ball in his hand. But he was impressive nonetheless. And I think he is another guy that solidified himself as a first-round wide receiver. You're always going to be a little more critical of the Oklahoma guys. That's just inherent in who you are. One guy who did crush it in the, uh, the 40, although he wanted, he wanted the best time overall, was Henry Ruggs from Alabama. The best time overall was John Ross, 4.22. He got 4.27. And some people say he had a bad start yeah. in that whole thing. But um, he's fast. Freaking. Got a big vertical. Right. Did not do the on-field workouts because he said, you know what? Uh, you don't need to see it. You saw it on, uh, on Saturday. Yeah, well, and he, I, th I think he tweaked his, his, his yeah, that's quad right. yes. or his hammy, yeah. whatever it is. He had a little ice on it. I don't think it was anything concerning, but he was a little concerned about that. You know, you know, you talk about the John Ross thing. You know, listen, I think Henry Ruggs is a better all-around receiver than John Ross. So I think this is another guy that's going to be in that first-round conversation. He's a weapon. This is a weapon. This is Tyree Killish, what he can do. And yet he, I think he's more fluid at the wide receiver position than Tyree Kill. You know, and yeah, the explosion is real. Whether you, you know, again, the four two seven or the funny you know, thing is, if you look at all the the top forty times for receivers right. of all time, there aren't that many players that actually excelled at the next level. No, so oh, there, yeah, there it is on the screen. You right. got, you know, John Ross at the top there, Jerome Mathis in 05 right below him. Marquise Goodwin has had some moments. Um, Tyrone Kalika. Jacoby Ford got hurt. He'd be Jacoby. a guy I'd look at that could have done that. Now, Tyreek Hill didn't run at the combine, so that would totally shit on that's, this whole little graphic, that's too. That's true. That's right? true. There might, be, it might right? be a few that haven't. So, run. you know, and then, you're, you're, but you're, to your point, I get it, because most of the times these guys are stiff. They're track runners. You know, you always hear that phrase. I don't think that's the case for Henry Ruggs. I don't. And, and then added to it, you know, the 42-inch vertical, that's going to allow a guy that's 5'11 to play a lot bigger that way too. But just from what I saw at Alabama, yeah, this is different than your prototypical track-type, straight-line speed type guy. Uh, and uh, I was impressed. I wish I would have got to see that on-the-field workout stuff, but mm -hmm. he's another guy where I sit here and go, I think pick 
25 through 32, you're going to hear Henry Ruggs' name thrown out there. Now, I haven't done the film yet, and we'll get into that in the next few weeks. But just my early thought would be that. Uh, Denzel Mims from Baylor. He uh, best on the three-cone mm -hmm. drill, which he often seen in an NFL game. You get the cones out there, and you just run. But run it is, but it, well, but it is a. It does you like have, that drill for wide receivers? It does. It tells you about their, a little bit about their hips and their feet. Okay, all sure. of it, and then also. You know, there's also a little bit of the 5-10-5 element, too, with the ability to, you know, okay, explode, change direction, explode again, and now come back and show your hips and your ability to put your foot in the ground and keep running seamlessly. Okay. Mims, to me, was one of the stars of the show. Really? Yes. So he was big at the Senior Bowl, too. He had a good performance in the Senior Bowl. They were showing you the top 40-yard dash times. He was tied for fifth, and so he's just fast and shifty, and so you liked him. Right. Now, this, that, that, like, and this is what I'm going to see. You know, like, I know a 4-2, not a lot of guys, but 4-3-8, man, there's a lot of superstars around that, around that time. You yeah. Know? Those were like, now you're getting to the Odell, the Julio Jones, those type of guys. He could have run faster, but he's like, I want to put myself in the Odell. <laughs> in that category. Yeah. He, he um, got a chance to meet him. Oh, you did? I did. He is another guy, I would say, he's, he's in the first-round conversation again. He's, oh, he's going in the first round. I shouldn't say that. He is. When you have that type of height, to me, he reminds me of Devontae Parker, except he's more explosive. And then when you go out there at 6'3", 207, and mm -hmm. run 4'3", 8", and, you know, 38.5 vertical jump, and like you said, the three-cone drill, 6'6", 6 6 6 at that size, that's insane. That's insane. I, it really is. That's for, like elite slot receivers at 6'6", six, six, mm. guys who are 5'9", and, you know, 185 pounds. So him to do that at 6'3", 207, um, first-round receiver. I mean, he's first-round receiver. I don't know what else to say. That's why I'm not sure if it's going to be 6, is it going to be 9. How many f receivers are going to go in the first round is going to be the big question. So the, uh, the funny thing is, is, like, his numbers jumped off in the three-cone drill there. But there were a lot of receivers whose numbers, you know, the 40-yard uh, dash for rugs, and then you have – Donovan Peoples-Jones yep. from Michigan, the best vertical, the best broad jump among all players. Yep. His uh, vertical was 44 and a half inches, tied for third all time. He's a former five-star recruit. I'm a little disappointed being a, a guy from, from Michigan that, that rooted for the Wolverines growing up that he didn't have a better final year at Michigan. Yeah, but I that's not totally that his fault. You're going to say that was more to do with the well, shitty, coaching staff and the yeah, quarterback. Shitty Jim Harbaugh offense, which has been shitty everywhere. And then, you know, yes, the quarterback play wasn't great either. So none of that's going to help him out. But is he just a workout star here? I don't think so. I think he's got size. He's got a physical nature in which he plays the position. I've seen him in person on the field when they came to Notre Dame a few years ago. He's put together. I think this kind of workout does help him. Now, one, he, I think, ran a faster 40 time than most people think or thought he would. Then the vertical jump like you talked about. Yep. To me, this is a guy that's going to be like a Michael Thomas in the NFL. You're not going to put him outside and be like, let's just burn people deep. I think his game is going to be physicality, over the middle, really being able to you know, run routes like a Michael Thomas in the middle of the field, and then you're going to see him catch a whole lot of fades in the back of the end zone for jump balls because of what you just saw with that vertical leap yeah. and his physicality. So he was huge. The other guy, like, hey, Jerry Judy is in that Justin Jefferson conversation. we got to hit on him real quick. Yep. I know we oh, don't want to sure. spend the whole podcast on receivers. Sure. Jerry Judy, to me, is the smoothest in all the drills, too. Okay. And to me, just from what I've seen on TV, and again, I'm not there yet, Jerry Judy is the best receiver in the draft. Now, I don't so know. He, yes, I was going to ask yeah. you, if, if you're quarterbacking a team, right. you would want him as your I think okay. so. He'd He's the guy man. that jumps out to be, to me, the most polished, everything about it. I think he plays faster than his 4-4 uh, 40 time anyways. So he jumps out. And then my last one at receiver that we mm -hmm. got to hit. Yep. Chase Claypool. Yeah. You know, I, I tweeted about it a little I, on I Thursday night. I tip my cap to you because during it's hard to tell because, we you know, you do Notre Dame yeah, all the time. Right. And so you're around the team so much. Yeah. And so you try not to be biased. Yes. You've, you've seen them play. Yes. And so there were some people that, that thought, like, maybe you're a little too high on him because you just saw him so yes, many times. Right, right. Um, But he popped. He popped. This is what, you know, I, I don't know if I expected these kind of numbers. Sure. But, hey, I've been around some studs at the NFL and wide receiver at the wide receiver position. You know, I mean, hey, I I, you know, seen Calvin Johnson in person threw to him during his workout when I was with the Tampa Bay Bucks. You know, Roy Williams, he was a top 10 pick for me out of Texas. I played with Brandon Marshall, Joey Galloway. I mean, I've seen some studs in my day. And when I would be on the field at Notre Dame, I would go, "Oh my gosh, this guy is a freak of nature." 
I, I, you know, and I wouldn't have thrown those things out unless I really believed it. I wasn't saying it because I was like, oh, I got to see Chase Claypool in the production meeting next Friday, and I want to make sure he likes me. Yeah. You know, I didn't know. I, I knew what I was seeing was a special, special specimen. Also, with the ability to mold the clay, he's still raw, mm -hmm. and he's a weapon. And it really is. And, you know, I had people on Twitter ask me, is he a tight end or a wide receiver? It doesn't really get – I don't f care. I mean, he can see either one, whatever you want him to be. He is a weapon. He is physical. He's unbelievable on special teams. He'll run block. So you'll be able to use him in some tight end hybrid type situations. But I think ultimately you're still going to be able to line him out at X receiver and just be like, beat the guy in front of you. And right. if you don't beat him, we're going to throw it to you anyways because you're a giant and you have a 40-inch vertical. And I think that's what you'll see. And I think he is a – I do. I think – I don't know if he goes first round. Okay. I think for sure he's a first round talent in my book. He could be a guy where, you know, people are a little scared about maybe immaturity issues early on at Notre Dame, and that this year was only his real statistical year at Notre Dame where he went, whoa, mm -hmm. right? And he could be one of those guys where it's DK Metcalf after next year. We're going, what, what were the 50 teams in front of them thinking to let him be pick 51? What right. would, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. So the last year, Pete, is that right? The top receiver taken was Hollywood Brown, number 25. They had two first rounders last year. Um, they did have some receivers later on in the draft that performed yeah, very well right. in the NFL, which probably helps these receivers coming up this year. Right. Um, so how many do you think get taken in the first round? I, I would say from just listening to you, five? I, I, at least Mims, five. Ruggs, Jefferson. Yep. Uh, uh, Judy. Judy, yes. Uh, who else are we missing in there? CD. CD Lamb. CD Lamb, yes, for sure. That group right there is definitely going. Now it comes into, yes, is the Chase Claypool, the right. C sneak in there. Yeah. Um, and there's probably a few other guys as I start to blast yeah. through film and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you haven't done, you haven't looked at all of them right. yet. So right. there, there's going to be more than there were last year for sure. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's go over to quarterbacks. Yeah. Sorry that I'm, took so long. I no, know but long. there's so many receivers. There is. That's exactly what it's going to be. Um, quarterback, there are a few. You know, not you know, Burrow didn't do anything, right? He talked and yeah, looks the part, handles himself like such a pro. Just yeah. uh, my look test in person too. Gosh, he's a he's a quarterback. I what know is that. that? What's the look test? Well, like hair, just, like the way he does his hair. Yeah, well, just attitude. the way and the size of the guy in person and just what he looks like, how he carries himself. Like, I'll say this, anybody who used to watch my, you know, old Bleacher Report podcast, I had Jared Goff come on my podcast uh, before the draft, and when he got done, I just said, you know, I did, that was not the normal attitude and presence I know of, like, an alpha male face of the organization mm. quarterback. It was a little concerning to me. Yeah. Joe Burrow f just reeks it. I mean, reeks it. He is, like stand in front of the podium like the perfect guy you'd ever want to be there, let alone we know he can play, but certainly look the part. Justin Herbert did perform on the field. Yes. And some of the scouting report, you know, arm talent. Yeah, I love that term. He's got arm talent. Right. He had a sub 4 7 40. Uh, seemed to hit his receivers during the on-field drills, which is always good. Yep. He did have the best three-cone drill among quarterbacks. You know, he showed it kind of in the Rose Bowl. Uh, he had the rushing touchdowns versus Wisconsin. I think he had three of them. So here's where he ranked if you're watching on YouTube. Freakish for height day. first, weight first. So he's got the size. He's right. got the arm talent. He's got some running ability. You like him, and I'm waiting for you to say, after watching more film of all these guys, that yeah. he's, like not, he's like one of the top two. He's like your number two quarterback. I'm waiting for you to say that. I don't know if you ever will, but... What'd well, think I think there's a real there? possibility I could say that. I yeah. do. I don't, I don't like it right now. I, I try to go in with a clean slate and not worry about anything. I don't give a shit where anybody's got Joe Burrow ranked or anything. Now, I expect just here early on for me to go Burrow and then a tight race between Tua and Herbert, and then Jordan Love would be the fourth guy. That's where I expect it to go, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be married to those thoughts. Now, Herbert, just from what I saw at the Combine, listen, again, you've heard me say this already. He's the guy I look at, again, that has the potential to be that, whoa, superstar player. He has some things about his game that are eye-popping or jaw-dropping or whatever it may be, and I think that's why he impressed me at the Combine the other night. It's not that everything was perfect. I get it. Not every throw was perfect, but the majority of his throws were really good. And then he made some really high, difficult, you know, just what do I want to say? You know, very difficult throws look very easy. Sure. And I'm into that. Yeah, I'm in. You know, that, that was what, you know, again, 
not to, I'm not comparing this guy, but when you look at elite quarterbacks, a lot of times that's what they do. When I was evaluating Patrick Mahomes coming out in the draft or even a Lamar Jackson or a Carson Wentz, they made plays where I want to go, I'm not so sure there's five quarterbacks in football that can make that throw, but they just did it and made it look like it was practice. Like it just didn't look like it. Yep. And Herbert was capable of doing that. Whether he threw some in cuts or some go routes or the post corner, he threw them so perfectly and so effortlessly that makes me go, ooh, wow, there's something special to this guy, let alone yeah. we know he's got the athletic prowess to go along with it. Yeah, and, and that, that debates, and we're going to see more and hear more from teams. Who you know, I don't, but he didn't hurt himself at all with the combine He's only helping himself. With the senior bowl and the combine, he's been the star of the show, two yeah. of those. So he's got to be rising. I would be shocked if he got out of the top ten. And I know people are being Because there are picky. some mock drafts out there now that are like, oh, could he fall to 20 and the Patriots are down there. They want right. – you don't think he – I don't think there's any the chance. I just I, – I don't. Now, the, the, listen, the big concern with Herbert is that he's never been out of Eugene, Oregon. That's all I hear from people. Yeah. So I get that. And, you know, I see some people on TV breaking down his game and, oh, he missed this throw or missed this play. I know. It's, it's not always perfect. But out of the quarterbacks we're talking about – and I haven't really dove into Jordan Love and see what that offense is about. But I'm going to guess that Justin Herbert was part of the worst offense out of all these major quarterbacks we're talking about in their first round. And I, a lot of the complaints I hear about him are offensive complaints. I want to go, that's not a Justin Herbert issue. You're talking about the offense, and for some reason you're pinning it on the quarterback. And that's not right either. So, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll see But where he went back goes. to play in that offense for an extra year. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, I yes, he did. I, I, I don't know why he did that either, but he did it. Uh, and he still threw for 33 touchdowns and six interceptions. So I don't, you know, again, that, I want to challenge that too. Jordan Love, uh, Utah State. One person said, uh, our sources said that he was a poor man's Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, some come on, like come that. on. Oh well, no, poor man could be very poor. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I man's. like Jordan Love, and I'm looking forward to really studying him. There's, yeah. he's a first round quarterback. I, I don't doubt that. I, I know that. I've seen right. that. Uh, and I, I, you know, yes, right now I would say he's the fourth guy that jumps out of me out of the four, but. Uh, I do think there's a lot of things to like about him. But, dude, everybody, like, calm down with that one. I mean, Patrick Mahomes right now is on the trajectory to be the greatest single-hand talent we've ever mm -hmm. seen in the history of football. Jordan Love does not jump out to me like that when I've seen him on TV or highlight clips or anything like that. It's a Patrick Mahomes scale. jumped out to me yeah. like that right away. Yes. I mean, as you've heard my dad say before when he came on, mm -hmm. like, I got done watching Patrick Mahomes like, Dad. Patrick, I haven't seen the other quarterbacks yet, but Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the draft. Like, yeah. I knew. Because I was like, I, he's making throws that I've only seen, like, Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre make. So that's where I went with that. It could be a very, very poor man's Patrick Mahomes. We're, yep. all, we're all a poor man's Patrick Mahomes at some level. You know, a, a homeless man's Patrick Mahomes. We're all going to be a I whole am. lot poorer than Patrick Mahomes here. Offensive line, we had some, uh, some guys who stood out. Yeah, let's talk about them. And uh, two of them in specific Yeah, here. let's hit them both. Let's start with uh, Makai Becton from Louisville. Yep. The fastest combine player ever over 350 pounds. He's actually 364 pounds. He ran a 5140. I think that's the fastest time that I've ever. I think I maybe got 48 one time in high school. Bullshit. Um, no, I did seriously. Yeah. Sure. Wind at my back. Yes. Uh, so Becton. Becton was is a beast, and he he ran fast at a, at a giant weight. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, definitely one of the best. I don't even care about you know the 40 or any of that. It's it's more the drills and the footwork I saw. That would have me excited. You know, one, I think that that position, the left tackle or right tackle, you have to be a special human being this day and age. I mean, just think about the freak of nature that you have to block by yourself one on one. Oh, hey, it's, you know, hey, it's Von Miller. Hey, it's Khalil Mack. They can only like throw people around the whole world with one arm. Yeah. We want you to stop them and we're not going to help you. You have to be a Neanderthal caveman freak of nature to be the guy that goes, oh, yeah, I'll block him. No problem, guys. You know, so, yes, the size, the footwork, it does remind me of Trent Brown. You know, I played with two guys at Texas, Leonard Davis, who was the number two pick in the draft, and Mike Williams, who I want to say was the fourth pick of the draft by the Buffalo Bills. They were yeah. both this kind of guy. They were... 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, they were 300, plus 350 pounds, right? But Leonard Davis didn't have the footwork to play tackle. He had to move him to guard. Mike Williams kind of ended up not being interested in football, and I can't really make a comparison there. But Becton, like, I think he is a true tackle, and that's where I'm excited about that. I mean, he can be, yeah, like Trent Brown. You or, may, yeah, Trent Brown. So here's yeah. the comparison with Trent Brown. Go. So Trent has got him in height just by about an inch or so. Uh Becton's got him in weight by 10 pounds, arm length 
Browns got them just by an inch, but yeah, very close. Very close. And, and all the numbers and trends just a little bit slower, but not a, not a whole lot. So. And, I mean, guys got a mean streak to him, too. So, that, that yes, I'm very excited about him. And, you know, he's going in the first round of the top 15 picks of the draft, too. All right. And uh, another one who, who jumped off the page, Tristan Wirfs from Iowa. Offensive lineman had the best 40 of any offensive lineman. Uh, best vertical, best broad jump for any offensive lineman. Actually broke the uh, record for offensive lineman vertical leap in combine history and tied it in the broad jump. He has been doing it his whole career. It's not just like he's doing it at the combine here. He was the first true freshman to start for Kirk Ferentz at Iowa. So if you think Becton's a first rounder, it looks like Worf's might be a top top five. Pick. I think so. I think Worf is probably going to be a top ten pick or something like that. Yeah. You know, I'll be the thing I'm I'm pumped to see with him. You know, and I don't know this. Again, like I said, I haven't watched film of him yet here. But you know, is he a guard? Is he a tackle? What will he be? Yeah, some people I read somewhere compared him to Quentin Nelson, who's a very good guard. Right. Well, he looks like a guard to me, the way okay. his body is built. Mm. You know, not quite as long, right? You know, but still long enough to play tackle. But looks like he's more of a road grader. Looks like you'd want to use some of his talents to pull and do things like that because he's so good with his movement and has a world-class ass and legs. I mean, world-class. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, yeah. did you see it? I didn't see it. Oh, dude, legs. look at this right here. Numbers. First of all, jumping oh, out got... of the water and doing that like that at 320 pounds. Are you kidding me? From his Instagram page. Right. He just look, was in the like pool. That's not like a fat, sloppy guy. He was in the pool, he... and he does a vertical. That's, out of the pool. That's And you need to watch his combine, like watch him run the 40 so you could appreciate his legs because his legs are special. They really are. It wow. doesn't do any justice in that video. But that's insane. And, yeah, I mean, this is a guy I think that some teams are probably going to look at and go, ooh, he's Zach Martin or Quentin Nelson at guard. Or, you know, he might be that tackle. We'll see where it goes, and I'll have a better answer for you here in the next few weeks. Some team's offensive line is going to get better. Yeah. Uh, whoever gets the top five, top ten pick with, with Werfs. Can we go over to the defensive side of the ball? You know we can. Okay. Let's go over to linebacker. Could be a safety, too. Um, but team's looking at Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. He had the best 40 for linebackers at 4.39. He yep. was fourth in the vertical, second in the broad jump. He was a shutdown after that. Had a good season at Clemson. So did it on the field, did it at the combine. Seems like one of the top linebackers. Yeah, he's one of the top players in the draft. And the only question you're going to have with Isaiah Simmons is just where, what is his position? What do you want him to do? Where is he? You is know, it a benefit to be able to play both? It, no? it, it is a benefit to have to or be able to like play. like a tweener? It's a little bit that way too, though. Yeah. It's like kind of what happened with Minka Fitzpatrick, where everyone goes, I don't, is he a corner? Is he a nickel corner? Is he a safety? Where the hell does he do? I don't get to see enough film of him dominating in one area. And I think that could be a little bit of an issue with Isaiah Simmons, but eventually someone's going to find the right spot for him, no doubt about it. And, you know, I can just say this. Over the last two, like last year in draft prep, I kept going, man, who the f is this number 11 on Clemson? Mm. He is all over the place. I think he had a better 2018 football season than he probably did 2019 football season, but just a special talent. I mean, there's no other way to say it, and the NFL is looking for these type of guys. I mean, this is, this is what everybody wants on their team right now. He never has to come off the field, right? Passing situation, oh, it's third and one. Oh, he can play smash mouth football too. So, yeah, he was amazing. We got to give Willie Gay Jr. from Mississippi State. He was also the second most physically gifted yeah. of the linebacker. Second the fastest for Willie Gay Jr. from right. Mississippi State. Right. Vertical um, was second as well. Yep. Seventh in the bench. I, I guess his issue was he had some altercations with teammates. It sounds like there's some off the field so off stuff. Field, but right. what you saw Typical on the field. Typical Mississippi State guy. Yeah, got a little right. edge to him. I right. like those kind of guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My and so, and guy. so do some NFL teams. Exactly. The Raiders have do. built a reputation on sure. that. Sure. Yeah. And you I, liked him? I, I did. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, there's just – there's not that many people that are walking around the planet that are that explosive. So, and, and I think that sometimes, you know, guys like that, they thrive in the NFL. Ooh, I'm getting paid. Ooh, this is all I got to do. I don't have to worry about school or anything like this anymore. Yeah. Ooh, this guy's a good athlete too. I better, you know, get on my P's and Q's here if I want to continue to play well or be a starter, whatever it may be. Sometimes just guys thrive in the NFL environment. I would bet you Willie Gay Jr. is going to be one of those guys. Defensive back. Kenneth Murray, another linebacker oh. for the Oklahoma linebacker. I just want to show some love to, too. He's, 
He's a first-round linebacker. That Hudson from Michigan, too, had uh, Hudson. 30, uh, 30 reps on the bench. Uh, well, the he's a, just one muscle. I mean, I know that. I'm a, I'm a big Khalil Hudson fan. Okay. Now, I think he's a strong safety in the NFL. I don't think mm, he's a linebacker. He's kind of a hybrid, in-the-box, safety, linebacker type guy. So, in the defensive back area, the ones that are considered that right now, you have uh, Javelin K. Guidry yeah. from Utah. Right. Tenth, uh, a tenth faster than any other DB in the 40. He was 4.29, second fastest time uh, of anyone in the uh, the combine, just below Henry Ruggs. 21 on the bench, so his numbers were jumping off the page. Yeah, uh, he was he was he was out of the defensive backs for the performance on the combine. He was number one. He he, I mean, right? of course, he makes a name for himself right right off the bat just with that. I he don't won't be the number the one player. DB taken. No, but. Akuda's going to be the number one yes. DB taken. Who also oh, had a Ohio State. Who yep, who had a strong showing himself. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you when you get four two nine, I mean, you know, again, it just it's one of those things. Yeah, it's that's a position where speed usually translates. Yeah, guys that run that fast usually seem to hang around even when they get drafted in the third and the fourth round. You know, like it comes to mind like a guy like Avante Maddox. Avante Maddox out of Pittsburgh, plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, oh, yeah, the film was a little raw, and he needed to clean up some things technique-wise. But just the pure speed is there to where you just go, if you're a good coach, you go, I think I can coach him technique. Yeah. And then I don't know, worry about the other stuff. He'll do it. And Avante Maddox is, of course, one of the stars in Philadelphia now. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'll be excited to watch him, though, either way, and that's a strong showing. Let me throw one more at you. No. R- running back. Yeah. Oh, who is your best running? We missed running well, back. We on the got offensive. to Jersey. I mean, you're going to Jersey, baby. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor. They seem to be dominating the right the the running back conversation. I think when the time like that, AJ Dillon was good AJ too for Dillon, Boston College. I'm glad you brought him up too. Again, at that size, to have some of the numbers he had, and not only the 40, but the broad, the vertical. You want to talk about ass and legs? I've seen that in person too. That's it's an unbelievable set. I mean, with what Derrick Henry did, people are like, oh wow. Right now, I'm not going to say he's Derrick Henry. Poor yet, man's but I Derrick get you. Henry. But you're right. Yeah. No, there's a role for a guy like him. He, you know, he's he is going to be someone's power back this year. Whereas a power back, where you're going to go, damn, our power back can break a 50 yard run that's pretty awesome so he'll have a role that way now Jonathan Taylor I think this is like to me maybe the, the his 40 time probably helped him out more than anybody else in this whole process 4.39 best yes. among running backs I think because you go in as the Wisconsin running back and people just go oh he's at Wisconsin they run the ball a lot a lot of running backs will put up good stats there you know, this is going to be make make him be seen in a different light. Very similar numbers to uh, to more Ezekiel explosive, Elliott, right? In the combine, I mean, more explosive. All of, you know, faster. You're right. Faster, Taylor's faster. Better jump. You're right. On both. Better broad jump. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, now is he the football player Ezekiel Elliott is? I don't know. We'll have to see, and I'll I'll tell you here soon. I know I'm really impressed with what I see from Jonathan Taylor when I watched on TV all year long. I really am. And, you know, again, I think this will make him be seen differently because now you're going to go, oh, okay, 40-yard run. Oh, it's the Big Ten. Who knows who's chasing him, whatever. Now you're going to go, well, no, this, uh, I don't care who's chasing him. He's fast. There's no, there's no doubt about it. You know, and we'll see. But I know he's a super talented runner and injected himself in at least that top 40 of the draft conversation now. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.